Bill, I'm with Kelly Moto TV. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, and welcome the all new 2021 Aprilia RS660. It's back up on the lift for yet another modification. And today, today we are working on the drivetrain of the motorcycle. That's right, we have a super light uh, sprocket and chain kit here from uh, Drive Systems down in LA. Uh, gotta give them huge props and thank you for getting me this so quick. Um, so what we're gonna be doing today is changing the front sprocket and the rear sprocket along with the chain. Now, the RS660 already comes with a 520 chain so and sprocket. So we don't have, I'm not gonna change that. We're gonna keep with the 520. Front sprocket stock is 17, rear is 43. We've decided to go down one tooth in the front to a 16 front sprocket, keeping the 43 rear sprocket. The reason being is I want a little bit more drive out of corners. I want a little bit more lower end. Uh, I feel like we've got a little bit of need at the bottom end. Uh, now, with sacrifice, lower end comes the top end. I'm not gonna be able to do 145 miles an hour on the motorcycle anymore, but I don't really find myself wanting to do high speeds on this bike. I really wanna keep kinda under that 100, 110 miles an hour, and I think the drive is gonna be out. So uh, we're gonna walk you guys step by step on pulling the front sprocket off, the rear wheel with the rear sprocket. We're gonna cut the chain step by step, stay tuned. Uh, we also have some very amazing news. The SC exhaust just arrived, and I have to be honest, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to contain myself and not get that thing on before we can get it back to the dyno. So I may just destroy all of the dyno stuff that I had planned for it just because I simply wanna hear this bike with exhaust on it. But uh, anyways, let's get the chassis cam on and let's start working on this uh, chain system, get the wheel off everything. So let's get going. All right, so we've got our tools all lined out here and you'll see we've got a, a 13 millimeter to uh, break the chain loose and the adjusters loose along with a 10 millimeter. We've got a 12 millimeter, which is going to be for our sprocket, a 14 millimeter for our sprocket nuts in the rear, and then a 25 millimeter for the nut here. Okay, uh, this is, let's see, this is an eight millimeter, which are the three bolts here that we're gonna do for the cover. You are also going to need, I believe it's a five millimeter to remove the nut, to remove the shifter. So you're gonna pull this off, pull this off. But first thing what we're gonna do is go ahead and get out to the chain and we're gonna grind down one corner of the chain here to be able to break the chain and then that way it's gonna allow us to free the wheel a little bit easier and then get the sprocket off. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna grind down one edge here on one of the links. We're gonna grind down the two here, which is gonna allow us to push that link out, which will break the chain free. All right, so if you guys have seen my handy dandy tool video, this is where this one comes in handy. So this is going to, oh, look at that. So we're gonna have to come down here. So what this does is this clamps onto the chain and then it actually is going to push the pin out. So you can see it's just basically pushing the pin out of the back and we'll go ahead and move this, loosen it, move it over to the next one. And again, we'll break this pin loose. And then that, voila, that's it. So super, super simple. So that's why we just trim the, trim that off, push this out. Our chain is loose, voila, bada bing, bada boom. It's the easiest way to get your chain off. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just pull the chain all the way through the top. And now our chain is loose. So super easy now because we can just toss that down there. 
So now our, our wheel is free from the sprock or from the chain. So now it allows us to break this wheel loose and pull this wheel off, okay? First, let's go ahead and tackle the front sprocket and get the front sprocket cover off and everything and uh, get this replaced, then we'll tackle the back end. All right, so the first thing we need to do is actually take the shifter off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of a mark right here, okay? Which is just gonna symbolize basically where the uh, shifter is, is placed. We're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove this screw completely. And then go ahead and gently wiggle out the shifter. And we'll pull this out and then we're just gonna set this kind of aside. So wherever we can, it'll end up resting there. And then we're gonna take our eight millimeter and we're gonna pull out these three bolts. One, two, and three, which will allow us to remove the access cover for the sprocket. So now we can see we've got our sprocket. I do have a sprocket cover coming by a spider as well, so. All right, so now we've got the sprocket exposed. Should be fairly easy to grab our 12 millimeter. And I've got a long breaker bar that we're gonna use. You can use an impact gun, but this should be fairly easy. I kind of experimented earlier and it was actually quite easy to pull off. Um, surprisingly, how little torque it was torqued down. So, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this bolt off. All right, well, a little bit of bad news. My understanding was the sprocket from the Tawano and the RSVs were the same, and the teething is actually slightly different. So uh, this actually won't slide on to the RS660. So we're gonna have to figure this out in a future video, but uh, basically you're gonna slide this on and bolt it on. Right now, we'll keep the stock toothing uh, and we can move to the rear and still get the rear done. So rear wheel, we're gonna go ahead and grab our uh, 25 millimeter and get this wheel rear wheel off. Let's see if the small socket can break it loose, yeah. So we'll go ahead and break this nut loose. And this nut, you're gonna go ahead and just pull the nut completely off. And with this off, we're gonna grab our little spacer here. Let's see if this comes out. Pulling that back a little bit. All right, so we're gonna give this a little bit of a love tap and tap, start tapping that out. And you'll notice on this side that the axle's starting to come out. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finagle this axle. We've got to pull the axle completely out. Be careful because the, the wheel is going to fall and we need to stabilize this brake. So uh, it looks like the brake is in here. So let's go ahead and get this axle slidden out all the way. All right, so with the axle all the way out, we're able to slide the wheel out completely and then get this on its brake side. And now you can see we're, we're working on here on the, uh, on the hub side here for the sprocket. So we're gonna be removing these three bolts, or five bolts, one, two, three, four, five, taking the sprocket and this guard off, and we're actually gonna put black super light bolts back on it. All right, so remove these bolts. So one, two, three, four, and number five. All right, with those five bolts, your sprocket and guard and five washers will come off. So what we're gonna do is we'll just go ahead and set this over here on the bench because we won't be using this anymore. 
And then let's go ahead and dig out our sprocket and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is going to work. All right, so sprocket confirmed works. Perfect. So um, we're not gonna put the guard back on. I'm not sure exactly. I think that chain guard is, I don't know, some safety feature, but we're gonna ditch it. And then I did go ahead and order from Superlight their black bolts, which are really nice. So it should complete the look. All right, so it looks like the torque spec is gonna be close to what the Tuano and the RSV is, 50 Newton meters, both for here and the front sprocket. So we're gonna go ahead and get this up on its side so we can get a little bit better access to the torquing and go ahead and get down to 50 Newton meters. And we'll kind of go in a star pattern. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our nice new sprocket on there. And then let's go ahead and just confirm while we've got the torque wrench on here that we torque the front sprocket down to 50 as well. Yep. All right, so I have to say there's usually no easy way of putting this back on. We wanna make sure that the rear brake doesn't bump into the rim. It looks like we've got a good stopper in there, so that's good. But we've got to finagle this in. Our little guard's in the way. And get it in there. And then once we've get it in, now we've got to work it up and lift it so that we can put the axle back in. So we're gonna to have to, with one hand, lift it get the brake in place. All right. So now that we've got the axle started, we can kind of start tapping it through. So once we start to tap it through, we're just gonna get this lined up so when we tap it all the way through, if you guys can see the nut coming through, there we go. So we should be able to essentially put this kind of back into spot, grab our washer, get our washer on there and our nut on there and go ahead and start getting this tightened down. Now this torque is gonna to be 120 Newton meters. So pretty good torque on the rear end here. But let's go ahead and uh, get the chain on before we tighten this up, because we wanna get the right length, we wanna get it adjusted correctly, then we get that tightened down. All right, now onto our chain, we have the DID uh, gold road racing chain. And this is, uh, looks like 112 links. So let's see how well now, <clears throat> usually drive systems cut these down so they fit perfect. But being that this is kind of a Tawano system or, or an RSV, I, I'm not 100% here. So we're gonna go ahead and, and loop this through and see how see how lengthy we've got here. All right, so we're gonna pull the chain through as it kind of works its way down here. And all the way down. Oh, I just love the gold chain, so. All right, so, oh, perfect. We, we have almost a perfect adjustment 
we might, we might have to cut off a tooth or two. Let's see. So we're gonna trim off one tooth here. If you can see, um, I don't, I would rather it tighter and stretch and be able to adjust it than have it too loose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shave this off right here and push that pin through, which will give us the access to be able to basically put the chain together right like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this taint chain nice and tight. We wanna make sure that we do a couple of things first. So on our master link here, we're gonna make sure we put our O-rings on each side with a little lubricant. So we'll get a little lube on here and here and go ahead and slide on one of our O-rings on each side and get that lube on there and pull the O-rings off the old chain. So we'll go ahead and slide in the link there and then pull our chain tight. All right, so now we've got that master link through. We're gonna go ahead and lube the two O-rings for the front. Okay. And then now we can go ahead and get the master link slid on. And we're gonna start that on there. So you'll see it'll, it'll start, but then of course we're gonna use our chain tool kit to push that all the way through on there and then mushroom up the rivets. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not the best at this. This is gonna take me some time, so I'm no master. So I would definitely go on YouTube and uh, just check out how to set your rivets because uh, it takes me a little bit of time, so. 8.01 p.m. All right, so some of you guys say you don't need it, but I'm gonna make my job a lot easier and use the new BPA chain racing adjustment tool so you can see that we're just a little too tight on here. So we'll go ahead and loosen the set screws and I'm gonna move the chain in just a little bit. All right, so now we should have a decently adjusted chain. I like it. And uh, now we can go ahead and torque this rear down. We're looking at 120 Newton meters for the rear axle nut. So we'll go ahead and get my nifty little thing here. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna set it to 120 Newton meters. All right, so we've got everything torqued down. I like the chain adjustment. Little bit, little bit tight. I might, I might loosen this just a teeny bit. Let's see what our trusty tool says. Yeah, it's on the tight side. So I'm gonna go ahead and play around with the adjustment on the chain. All right, so now we've got a better, better slack, better slack, I like it. And uh, let's go ahead and get the front buttoned up. So get this removed. And this cover, it's a little tricky because you've got two wires that go through, one that goes through here, that's your quick shifter. And then you've got the hose that lines up through here. So the hose, it's gotta go in here. All right, so we're just about buttoned up. We got all the bolts in. You can see I've lined this up here and we can get our little nut threaded through and tightened up. 
and let's take uh, a final torque spec on everything and then do a final look at and uh, get you guys a little outro. All right, well, there we have it. The new Superlight 43 tooth sprocket in the rear with the DID racing chain. Oh, the, I just absolutely love the black and gold sprocket. We have them on all the bikes. The, the Street Fighter, love it. And the Tuano, love it. And now the RS660, love it again. Absolutely. So here's the deal. Um, so the rear sprocket, you know, sometimes I order stuff in hopes that it's gonna fit. And sometimes it, it doesn't always happen that way. Um, you know, when we get a bike as new as the, the RS, we experienced the same thing with the Street Fighter. Really, we were trying to get parts that would fit from the Street Fighter to the to the V4S, um, the Panigale. And so, really, we were finding that a lot of stuff was really fitting. So, it's unfortunate that the front sprocket uh, is not available currently. So, I'm assuming we'll have to wait for that. But that's gonna be an easy change because we'll be able to pull the sprocket off, adjust the chain forward, get the sprocket off, put the new sprocket on there, adjust the chain and be good. Plus I gotta get the new uh, sprocket cover on there anyway. So uh, thank you guys for sticking around. Again, not the greatest informational video. Um, I would encourage you guys to go on YouTube and look at professionals change their chain, but uh, I don't know, I've, I've, I've changed enough chains that I know how to get by doing it. So uh, thank you guys for sticking around. Again, we have the new SC Project exhaust down there. We have some more spider parts coming. We have the rear sets we've got to put on. Those are actually, uh, actually right here, all ready to go on. The problem is, is the mounting, we've got to pull the frame bolt out to change the rear sets. So because that holds the swing arm, we have to, like the MT-09, we have to suspend the rear end in order to get that to work. So uh, a bigger job, bigger job. I'm gonna probably do that on a live video with you guys. Um, maybe next weekend we'll get the rear sets on. But I'm trying to really determine if I'm gonna put the exhaust on I'm still waiting for the velocity stacks. Apparently they've been lost in the mail. They were supposed to be here a week ago. Um, they're showing still in Denver. Um, so thank you guys for sticking around. Hang with me in the garage while we do this kind of the chain and sprocket chain uh, uh, swap. So thank you guys again. Do the normal, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button and ring the bell notification. Um, I'm trying to do as much as I can on this thing for you guys to show you guys what the potential of this RS660 is. So uh, again, thanks for sticking around with me and uh, we'll see you next video. Bye guys.